Hi everybody. What I have today are two fountain pens that I got from my recent order on Goulet pens. And since I ordered them, I actually learned that they have the exact same nids on them. So um, this won't just be a comparison of the two pen bodies and we'll see how they write. They are supposed to both be the point three, so um, this is actually a good opportunity because I have been, I have two Koiko, no, Kakuno. I have two Kakunos in a fine point and they don't actually behave the same. Uh, the nibs aren't exactly the same, so I'll be interested to see what the Pilot pens are like. Um, the Sorry, this is not Pilot. These are both Platinum. This one is the Platinum Preppy and this one is the Platinum Prefount pen. This one is in dark emerald and this one is in black. The dark emerald comes with a blue ink. So let's just see how we go. So the platinum preppy, it just came like this with the ink cartridge in the body and the cap on. There was no additional packaging. I also got these O-rings for it because they are supposed to allow you to eyedropper fill the pen. I love eyedropper filling a pen. So we, um, all you got to do to get this started hopefully is just put this cartridge in. It's already spin some ink into there and it's, damn, there's already some ink on the, on the nib as well. So we'll just give this a second to get itself together. I'll put it um, I'll put it nib down in a little ball of twine while we open this one up. So, this is the prefound. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. Prefounte would probably be fancier. And, okay, so when I ordered these, I didn't know they had the same exact nib on them. I, um... They also have, I've read since, buy, since buying them, that they have interchangeable parts as well. So this, uh, this nib housing and the body of the pen are the same. However, uh, the prefount is more expensive. And also, the back of the packaging here says that it has a special cap on it, uh, which the preppy does not have, apparently. I don't see any differences right off the bat, except for the color and the clip. But they, this cap for the prefound pen supposedly um, will keep your pen inked without drying out for an entire year. So I think that's where the more expensive part of it comes from. You can also get these in better colors. The platinum preppy obviously once you get the preppy you can put whatever color you want in it but it just comes with a body color that matches the ink they're all slightly transparent but this is the black so it's got black and that's all you can get uh, I love this emerald color so already I like this pen body a lot better but I think they're about twice the price even then they're not very expensive I think this one's like five dollars and this one's around ten dollars not a hundred percent sure but I will put the the cost that I paid from Goulet pins I'll put that in the description box below so this one also spits it out when I push it down you can tell already I can tell already that it's blue and not black and that one writes immediately. I I really don't find pens that do that very often. I usually have to, you know, wait for them, like the preppy over there. So that's that's amazing. I don't even know how it gets down there to write that fast. Really, I, I would expect more to have to, uh, you know, wait, which is my general experience. So let's check out these nibs. They feel about the same to me, so their quality control and their consistency is right on the nose. I have, um, I'm getting a, a very decent medium line. To me, that's not a 0.3 line. If you take, 
a normal 0.3 pin. The Zebra Sarasa is a 0 0.5, point, oh, that's 0 0.5, is it? These are 0.5s. These are definitely 0.5s. So a 0.5 millimeter pen is more like that, which I am able to get with reverse writing, but uh, that is definitely like a 1.0 millimeter or a 0.7 or a 0.9. It's pretty bold line. This one is pretty much the same. There's a little bit of feedback and I would say a very juicy writer. However, I'm not too familiar with this ink, so I can't say for sure what what they're like because the ink can definitely impact how juicy they are. I really like the weight of line I can get with the reverse writing, and I really like the line of weight I can get writing with it the way you're supposed to. So, I definitely think I would use these pens for sketching, especially especially as my less uh, precious ones. I am going to try to put this, I am going to try to do these o-ring thing and do uh, the eyedropper fill for these as well. So let's get two of these babies and see if it works on both of them. Now. I've tried a lot of eyedropper conversions and it doesn't tend to work that well for me. I mean, I the, I think the reason is because my my judgment is very high. I would like to be able to throw a pen in my backpack and have it not leak or not have it come out of here into the cap. Now, I've never actually had a pen leak into my bag, but they always leak into the cap. So if I'm setting a pen nib down in my pen jar on my desk, the eyedropper fill pens are consistently leaking into the cap. Obviously, I could store them horizontally and avoid that problem myself, but I mean, what's the point of doing all this grease and O-rings and stuff if it's just gonna leak into the cap? I'm not sure. To me, I mean, when you have, when I have my cartridge pens, I definitely, none of them leak into the leak into the cap. And I'm not sure if it's just the higher quantity of ink making, you know, pushing down more on it and dripping out or, I mean, I'm sure the air distribution is different and all that, but it, it really annoys me that, it really annoys me when they leak into the cap. So maybe my expectations are too high, but... Also, I will keep trying to eyedropper anything that I can until I either have done enough to know that to know better, to know that that's too high of a standard, or I find one. So, uh, I mean, these came with special O-rings and everything, and maybe they will allow me to eyedropper fill these things without any issues. So the ink I'm going to use is the RNK sketch ink. I'm going to use the black one. It's called Lot. And I'm going to go well It's between rinsing this out and it's, it's between having a little bit of water mixed in with the zinc or having a little bit of the other ink mixed in with the zinc. I think I'm just going to go with the ink mixed in with the ink. Um, they're both black inks and since these I don't think are going to be waterproof, I'll be able to tell just by washing over it if it's going to have a if it's going to have a problem. I touched that so I had to re re-silicone grease it. I got this with my Twisby Eco, so I know it's fountain pen safe. I got these O-rings specifically for this pen, so I know that those are correct. And we'll just go ahead and eyedropper this baby up and see if it actually does a good job here. 
I have my syringe. I use this all the time for inking pens and cartridges. Got this on jet pens. They are only a, a few dollars and it is a blunt tip, three milliliter capacity syringe. For me, this is an essential tool. I have this right, you know, right in my main kit, always ready to go. You could use an eyedropper too. You don't need a precise syringe tip. This thing is humongous, so. Um, but I'm just using it because it's a bit, it's right there and I like it. So, we'll just fill this baby up with ink. Now, they're a little more delicate when they're actually half full, so I'm gonna leave this half full. Uh, you get more burping and stuff like that when they're half full because something about the air pressure inside. Um, change the temperature. The temperature of the air inside can be changed a lot more easily by your hand, and that is what causes the burping effect, so. We're, get, we're going right for the jugular here in terms of testing and just see how, how well this performs with the hard stuff right up front. And I'm just grabbing a Q-tip here because that I got a little bit on here and I just don't want anything to mess with the seal. I mean, like I said, I've never had problems with I eyedropper or anything I can get my hands on, and I've never had an issue with anything leaking out of here, even without O-rings, even without silicone grease. Where I always have issues with things leaking is from the tip into the cap. So there's all the ink in there. Now that O-ring, I, I screwed it on pretty tight, but that O-ring is already bulging out. So that's not too promising. But it does seem like a solid fit. And with that much silicone grease plus the O-ring, I highly doubt anything's getting out of there. So that seems all right. At least it still writes, draws lines. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this one upside down in my little makeshift pen jar right here while I attempt to eyedropper this one. And we'll see if it leaks out. This one is blue ink, but I'm still gonna go ahead and just fill it up with my R and K lot sketch ink. Now you can actually get bad effects mixing fountain pen inks, and it's generally not recommended to mix fountain pen inks because they you don't necessarily know how they're going to interact with each other. They could cause you know a, an actual chemical reaction based on their individual properties and pH balance, and just not have a good reaction with each other, and not have a good reaction with your pen. So if you're if you're you know, attempting an eyedropper or you're doing something, don't be sloppy like this and just put the ink in there. Um, when you already have this, the reason I'm not cleaning it out is because you have to clean it out and then really wait for it to dry. Actually, I think I, I might with this one because the reason I didn't want to clean it out, the other one, is because I didn't want to take this whole section apart and clean it out and then risk that being the issue that makes the eyedropper fill not work. But since I have two of them, I can go ahead and dismantle this one and clean it. And the reason, you wouldn't even normally have to dismantle them. Usually a normal flush is fine. I also have these which come with the platinum, uh, not platinum, the Pilot Parallel pens look like this. I love these Pilot Parallel pens. I use them all the time. So I have a bunch of these and you can actually just, even though it's not a perfect fit, you can use this to sort of squish water in there and that should be enough to clean out most of your fountain pens. However, you either have to wait for it to dry from there um, or you have a bunch of water in your pen and it takes a while for all that to flush, you know, flush out and then your, your actual ink is diluted when you first start writing. And so 
for me, if I take it apart, it's sloppy. It's a sloppy way to do it, but it's a quick and quick and easy way to do it because then I can dry the feed and the nib separately, put them back in, and then they'll be ready to go without um, diluting my ink. So I'm gonna go wash this out and then we'll try this pen after having been dismantled eyedropper fill that one as well so I'll be right back all right well some of you know enough about fountain mints to probably you had seen that coming but this doesn't come out so on the preppies and I mean since these are the same the fontaines they the the feed doesn't come out so I got the nib out it's pretty easy to just pull that out but um there's probably gonna be some water in there. I think water is probably better than another ink. I don't know. I mean, we're testing the eyedropper, so we'll just be testing the eyedropper. All right, so yeah, if you're considering buying that pen, I you're not supposed to really take your pens apart too much. I don't take my pens apart if they're expensive pens or really nice pens or pens that I love and but for the cheap and cheerful pens, I really want to be able to take them apart because sometimes you just need something that's quick and dirty to clean, to dry, and to make sure that you can just get all your stuff out. I mean, just use dip pens, right? I do. I do. Most of the time. But I also like to have a good cheap pen that is super easy to clean. So we're just gonna, this one I'm gonna put even less ink in. I'm gonna fill it like a third of the way and we'll see how that goes. And then make sure to get any residual ink that kind of got on the, the, the edge where it's gonna screw in. And then put this together. And we'll see if this one, look at that, it's just writing in water because I was sloppy. And now it's diluted. So we've got our two pins. They write pretty awesome. This one is still not leaking. So I am extremely happy with the conversion so far. There's a tiny bit of flex in the nib, but you do have to push down. I would not recommend using this as a flex nib. It's just got, it's just a little soft and bouncy in writing. It's very juicy. I mean, I, w I would guess it's it's even more juicy since I eyedroppered it, but I actually really like this pen. Yeah, I'm getting a an even juicier reverse writing line, very smooth reverse writing line. I like when pens can have reverse writing because then you have two different line weights of pen in one. You just just as easily flip it over and you have a finer line and then you know back to your regular sketching line and I use these primarily to draw so I like having a finer line for doing some you know details or some hatching and instead of carrying around two pins I only have to carry around one pen I would definitely carry this pen as my daily sketcher so I'm gonna give it a couple days of sitting on my desk and see and writing with it I'll do a couple of sketches with it actually we can do a sketch with it right now together all right here's my sketchbook and I made this from Fabriano Artistico paper and the page that I like to use is this page here so I have all the pens that I've tested out as sketching pens and you know I have them all on the same page here because you get the comparison of the the reverse writing fine line and the the regular writing and if it has any flex or gets any bolder it's just a nice comparison to see what kind of uh, what kind of sh shades you can get what kind of values you can get from the same pen in, in a picture so I have just one tiny spot here and I think I'm just gonna draw a little one right down here to show the the new pen that I got and I'm actually gonna use this pre fount pen because no I'll use the preppy pen because that one still has a little bit of water in it so we're gonna use the preppy 
to, te to test uh, how I would like it for sketching. So I'm actually not going to do this upside down. I'll do this right side up. And I'm just using a reference from Pinterest. It's just the outline drawing of these flowers and it's just a really nice way, um, a really easy way to see what kind of line variation I can get. I do the insides of the flowers with the reverse writing and I do the outsides of them with the regular writing and then we'll just see how it goes and get a decent review of how this pen actually writes as well. So this ink should mostly be waterproof by the time the original ink gets out of it. I don't think the platinum ink, it could be. Platinum carbon black is actually one of the best waterproof inks that they make, but I don't know if the cartridges that they send with the preppies and the pre-founts, I highly doubt that the blue is, but I'm not sure if the black is waterproof either. I wouldn't expect, <clears throat> I normally don't expect inks to be waterproof. Generally, almost all fountain pen inks are not waterproof unless they come from a specific waterproof line, so I generally don't rely on them being waterproof right off the bat, but the ink that I refilled it with is waterproof, the r &K lot, so by the, you know, the first couple of lines maybe aren't going to be, but by the time that ink plays itself out, um, all of these other ones were also done with waterproof ink, and so actually I wish that I would have filled this with blue black because all the rest of these are done with blue black and this is going to make, you know, using a different ink is going to make a little bit of a difference. However, I already started, I'm going to keep going because I've never even used this pen so it'll still be uh, enough of a learning experience, enough of a useful task to go ahead and see what it's like drawing with this. Um, surprisingly, this is my first pen drawing on this channel, and it's a super, super new channel. I've posted maybe, I, I don't know, 15 videos to now, but none of them have been of pen drawing. And the reason that's weird is because that's almost all I do, or that's... It's not all I do, but it's definitely my main go-to. I love pen. I love drawing with pens, and I love just drawing in general. So it's super weird that I ended up with all those videos posted before I did any drawings with anything on here. And also that my first drawing video isn't even a drawing video. It's more of a pen review video. But that's what happens sometimes. So, about the pen, it doesn't feel too cheap. I mean, I guess especially with this, it kind of reminds me of those Uniball rollerball pens. And it's pretty, it's pretty even for a line weight. It's pretty thick and juicy for a line weight. So, I'd say it's super, super comparable to those Uniball rollerball pens. And I tried basically every rollerball pen on the market before I did, before I actually even realized fountain pens were a thing. I mean, I, I knew they were, but I guess it didn't click that you could use them for art. So I, I can't think of another pen that's so spot on as that one, but it is a pretty close comparison in terms of the writing experience. And even though it's a pretty bouncy nib, you don't get much line variation at all when you're drawing with it. And it doesn't feel soft. It, I mean, actually, you don't get too much different kinds of feedback or anything from it. I mean, I would say, compared to all the fountain pens that I have, this one feels the most like a regular pen. Which, this pen is marketed as an entry level pen. It's supposed to be very easy to use and very beginner friendly. Some fountain pens I hand to my friends and have to give them a tutorial about how to write with them. This one would not be like that. This one is very straightforward, especially with that pre-fount, how it just completely, you know, I 
put that cartridge in and it wrote immediately out of the packaging. I'd say they do a fantastic job. I'm very impressed with this pen as a beginner mark as a beginner pen and at um the way that they market it as a beginner pen and at the price point. This is just amazing to me. Um so if if you don't have a fountain pen yet, you should get one of these. And the eyedropper fill feature is super awesome. You can hold a lot of ink. I, I'll check back after a couple days before, I, I won't post this video until I've let it sit on my desk for a couple days, so I'll come back on and let you guys know before I post this if, if it's gonna be, you know, a pen that you can throw in your bag and just carry around for sketching because the main use of the, the main benefit of being able to eyedropper fill something is that you can carry a lot of ink around with you so if you're going for an entire day of sketching or even a week of sketching or just on a, a trip or something you don't have to carry all your ink bottles or extra cartridges or you know anything to refill the pen you just don't have to worry about it and the awesome thing about these two is they're you know they've got a transparent body so you're going to be able to tell when you're running out of ink anyways and if you're about to leave the house it's a quick glance to see if you need to refill real quick before you leave I am very impressed. I kind of wish that this was my first fountain pen. If, if anybody else asks me for a recommendation in the future, I'll probably just buy a bunch of these and give them to all my friends who I want to try to convert over to the fountain pen hobby. So if you have some inks you want to try or if you're just interested in having a pen that is refillable rather than disposable, these are fantastic. And I'm getting a super, super thick, so it's already going to look a little bit darker than the rest of these because it's black. These are blue-black ink. And the reason I use blue-black ink is because I have not found a black ink, this r &K lot included, that doesn't rub off onto the next page when I close my sketchbook. So over time, these areas that are thicker and even some, you know, some of these thicker lines will get some friction and um, it, when my sketchbook is closed, even though, it, even in sketchbooks that I just keep on my desk or keep on a bookshelf and don't throw in my backpack and don't have a lot of, you know, wear and tear on them. And it'll rub off and create marks on the other side of the page. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Cause I did some tests. I got this Midori MD notebook and I ended up loving it for other reasons, but look at that. Some do it worse than others, but in general, they all do it just rubbing off on the other side and I haven't I, I I did a whole thing where I tested all the black inks I could find all the black f waterproof fountain pen inks I could find and they all did the same thing so I switched to using blue black which for some reason the colors don't seem to do it this this do it as badly which is weird to me I mean these these black waterproof inks are literally bulletproof like some of them are even called noodlers has one that's called bulletproof ink and you can soak them in water without them coming off the page then you close your sketchbook and they come off the page what is that I don't know I think it's due to I think that they make these super black super waterproof inks with carbon and I think that the transfer is from carbon but I mean the reason I got into pens in the first place is because I wanted something stable and totally reliable and that I did not have to worry about I mean it's harder to use colored pencils in your sketchbook because you got to worry about them rubbing off on the other page colored pencils regular pencils and so when I was testing all the materials and deciding what to use in my sketchbooks I mean I really had this idea of pen as being like super easy and super not temperamental. And then I ended up having all kinds of experiments to make sure I got a pen that wasn't temperamental. So um, that was a tangent, but it already looks darker. Um, and I'm just gonna look at the difference between the darks and the lights that I can get. This one is my favorite, which is also kind of why it's bigger. Um, this is another platinum pen here. 
This is my Platinum Pocket Pen, which I currently have inked with my favorite drawing ink and I'm using as my main pen right now. Where is she? Or he? Right here. Okay. This is my Platinum Pocket Pen. I love this thing. This is definitely in my top two pens of all time and I love the difference between the reverse writing and the regular writing. This is my maybe number one pen of all time, the Schaefer. It's a vintage Schaefer Imperial pen. Looks like this. It's got an inlaid nib. And I mean, my search would be over with these two pens. These two pens are perfect. Perfect. I would use these for and nothing else except like I've been saying, I like to throw a pen in my bag and I like to go on sketch trips and I like to not worry about the pens. So uh, those are literally irreplaceable. I can't find other pens and because they're vintage, you never know what you're gonna get. I even bought another Schaefer Imperial. I got the same exact thing, same exact nib and everything. This is my second one. It, the only thing different is the body color and this is what it does so the nib isn't the same at all and i recently in the same order that i bought these i bought a nib tuning kit from goulet pens and that is what i'm hoping i'm hoping i can learn obviously i'm not going to start with these two pens but i'm hoping i can learn to bridge the gap between here and here if the nib comes the same exact on the pen but it's performing differently i'm hoping that i can learn how to help it along and help it do a little more like what I would like it to do. So we have a little sample here. These are fantastic. I would definitely put these, you know, up there with some of my absolute favorites. I mean, the dark to light difference is, is pretty awesome. It's definitely more pronounced than the Kakuno. Uh, the Kawiko Sport didn't do that good. Actually, that wasn't a Kawiko nib. That was a that was a FPR medium nib, which is super weird because I got the FPR medium and the FPR fine, and the fine <laughs> had bolder lines writing regular and thinner lines writing reverse than the medium. So that's another thing that just freaking frustrates me about nibs. They don't, even if you buy them from the same company, like this, this fine shouldn't write as thick as this medium. And so I know that they have less tipping material. I know that they have the bones to be what they're supposed to be. And that's why I'm doing the, that's why I'm trying to do nib, nib tuning. But I'm super beginner on that. So it does, it did kind of hard start. I was sitting there talking and not writing with it and it didn't like that very much i mean most pens don't that's not necessarily a flaw it's just something to note that they you know they're not exactly like roller balls but this is a very solidly performing pen and i am very happy that i tried these out i will definitely consider this my main repertoire of inked pens, especially if this eyedropper goes really good. I mean, these could just jump right to the top. I A lot of times I feel like that, though, about pens that I buy and try the first time. I mean, I'm either immediately disappointed or, like, super excited, thinking it's going to be my, you know, one of my main pens. This one's definitely in that category. So I'm back. It's been about a month since I filmed the original video and I have my pre-fount pen here. It hasn't been sitting for a full month. It's I used it maybe two days ago, so it's only been sitting for two days, but it has been on my desk and in my pencil case and in my backpack in that time and I've had no leaks in the cap and no issues with anything leaking out of this pen. So this is essentially this has become my number one recommendation for a beginner pen because out of all the fountain pens I've ever used this is the closest to a non-fountain pen it's it's so stable and unfragile that you can carry it around in your bag 
as if it were not a fountain pen. I find with a lot of my other ones, I'm very precious with them. I, you know, have to make sure they're laying horizontally or, you know, stored in a specific way. You have to make sure you draw with them every day or every other day at least in order for the nibs not to get ink dried out in them. And they are a bit more high maintenance than, um, you know, just throwing a gel pen in your bag. But these are the exception to that. So I will highly recommend these to beginners who want fountain pens primarily either to try out different kinds of inks or use more interesting inks than are offered in regular pens because they do not have uh, near the offering that you can get with fountain pen inks. Or, you know, I mean, you can carry a magnificent amount of ink in this eyedropper fill system and it's completely reusable and environmentally friendly. You're not throwing away, you know, all the plastic every time you go through a pen. And for someone like me who writes and draws a lot and goes through a lot of ink, that is extremely helpful. So yeah, these come with my highest recommendation. I, I would say I'm very impressed and I'll keep these in my system in my you know in my bag it, it also kind of my two favorite pens right now are, are these opuses opus 88 pens with different nibs on them which are also eyedropper these are a lot more expensive for a stable pen that you can eyedropper fill this is about six no this one was eleven dollars and the preppy was like six dollars these are you know 88 to 180 to 100 dollars so <clears throat> I, you know, 100% beginner pen right here. This pre-fount. I'm, I'm choosing the pre-fount rather than the preppy because it's supposed to have the special cap that keeps everything dry or from drying out for up to a year. And the preppies do not make that claim. However, I did not have any issues with the preppies either in terms of leaking into the cap or the seal being bad. Um, I just think... I, I'm just erring on the side of, I mean, spending $10 on a fountain pen for me isn't a big deal, so I'm still considering this pre fount an extremely cheap one <clears throat> that I will just use as a way to get whatever ink I want and have a refillable pen. So I hope you all enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.